I had a request uh, the other day to look at some games from the players' rating ranges of 1300 to 1400 with a time control 1510. So I have tried to get those games live, but it's very difficult to get that particular category. So what I have done is flicked over some games that have been played in the last week or so. So these are... A couple of interesting games with a couple of recurring themes coming up. So let's have a look. All right, so this game is a familiar theme as to the one I did the other day, which I'll, I'll put the link above, where both players do not use the time correctly like, at all. They just sort of race through uh, bullet and blitz speed, really. So let's just have a look at the game anyway, because it does pull out a few interesting themes. So we get like a four night setup, bishop b5, bishop c5. And, you know, this is good. You know, developing pieces early on, this is absolutely fine. Bang out the knights, develop pieces, no problem whatsoever. Uh, white takes on this sort of, a type of sort of reverse knight foot trick. So after taking the pawn and knight takes, we get this, which is like the, the reverse sort of situations you normally see, but it's also absolutely perfectly fine. Now, what you can do in this position for black is the normal idea is just to drop the bishop back and then when, let's put that on the board actually. When pawn takes, black, bishop takes, and we get, you know, an equalish sort of position. Uh, however, black didn't do that, but what black played was fine. Kicking the bishop, and hitting the knight, and then taking this pawn, which is also fine, absolutely fine. So if you're white in this position, what piece are you going to take? Right, so unfortunately, black, white spent, let's have a look four seconds to make this decision right and uh, which cost right the game right that, that's as simple as that so you have got i feel like i'm having a big rant about the time recently but you 15 minutes with 10 second increment like i really would recommend using more than sort of four seconds making a major decision and that decision that four second decision has just cost white the game really so uh black plays well from this uh position doesn't really have any struggles at all a couple of missed tactics but you know they've won the game already uh without really thinking probably uh so let's just have a look how the game panned out your whole rook up and what black's got to do that's a nice move just activating the bishop as well it's just for material and the extra will obviously tell c5's fine which is still absolutely crushing for black. It's just here, like, white could maybe drop the bishop back and then still pick up the uh, the knight, probably. Right, so there is a tactic that black misses here. So what would you play as black in this position? So yeah, bringing one of the rooks to the C file, just pinning and winning the queen for the rook. Black misses this tactic, but is still obviously up a whole rook at this point. And the game, white sort of tries something, tries throwing the pieces away, sacking, so but I don't know. Uh, and then white just uh, disconnects. So that was that game. So game two, I think there's a couple of instructive points in game two that hopefully you know, it's useful to some people uh, watching this video. So let's have a look. We go into an Italian game, which is an absolutely fine opening at all levels. Uh, C3. B4 comes up now. Uh, personally, probably wouldn't play a B4, but it's absolutely playable. Absolutely fine. Uh, I just like, I like this structure myself as white. So, you know, I'd play around with this structure. That, but that's just a personal choice. Absolutely. Uh, I don't like this move coming up for white, right? I don't really understand, having played the bishop to c4, why are you then going to move it again, you know, a couple of moves later? That's just waste to move uh, for no reason whatsoever. You know, if you want to play the bishop to b5, you know, play the bishop to b5 originally. It's just, you know, you're throwing away a move, really, but it's not going to cost white the game at this level. Moving the bishop once, it's not, it's not a good habit to get into once you've moved it, to move it again. Uh, I don't like that sort of thing. So, Black playing absolutely fine. Uh, there's maybe a little issue that Black could improve slightly because after this move, right, Black gets this off open file and Black does shift the rook immediately. So, I like what Black's doing so far. Uh, maybe Black could be even smarter. I don't know. Maybe 
maybe in this position. Right, because unfortunately we play rookie A, then we have to play it back again. So it's possible that black could improve slightly here by playing D6. Right, let's say normal moves for white, cast the normal development moves. Uh, and then challenging the bishop, and then playing this move. And if bishop takes, then you can open... You can open the file and your rook's already on, on, F, on F8 ready. You don't have to bring it back again. But that's just maybe a minor sort of uh, possibility uh, that but Black could sort of consider, or players could consider in this type of position. So anyway, let's get back to the game. Yeah, everything fine. Uh, challenging the bishops, fine. Getting out the pin, makes sense, absolutely. White's playing fine again. So again, apart from... You know the bishop thing and there may be slight improvement around this sort of maneuvering i think both players are playing this fine absolutely fine uh, both players are playing quickly again you know we are 15 minute with 10 second increments both players have uh, black's got 14 minutes 45 seconds white's got 40 minutes 13 seconds they're still playing this very quick uh, which I'm, I'm discovering is a common theme uh, anyway let's have a look so this move kicks the knight but i don't like the knight coming to this square Right, I think it's much better bringing the knight in here, e7, and then maybe the knight's got a better future. I would really like to get one of these knights on f4. Really, really powerful. Right, especially as black's played h3, and then any sort of g3 is going to be a weakening. We can immediately jump on the pawn, for example. So if I was black in this position, my plan would be get a knight, bang a knight on f4, and either one uh, it would be fine. But it makes sense for me to move this knight into to e7. Right, transfer it to the king side. And this bishop's strong, you know, against the king. So that's what I would do. So I don't like, this is sort of a positional area. Because well, where's this knight going? Right, it can only come via this square again to go back to that square anyway, right? So if you can bring the, the knight to e7 in one move, it doesn't make any sense to do it in three moves. Yeah, it's just a it's just a waste. Uh, it, this pawn's really really strong, and this pawn's really, really strong. So it doesn't look like White is going to lose this pawn, for example. Right, we've got two pieces defending this pawn, so yeah, makes sense. Ninety-seven. Right, so c4. Right, further cement in this pawn. Right, so this knight's now completely sort of stuck on the route. I uh, don't really understand where this knight's going. Right, I would want, like I said, 90 f4 ideas. You can't do it that immediately. Because there's a tactic. Can anybody spot a tactic? So, the problem with this is this. Right, and then hitting the queen. And like, if we take the knight, bang. So, you can't do that immediately. You have to look out for that sort of tactics. But, you know, eventually the queen moves, then you can still bring this knight to f4. But bringing the knight down to h7, again, you can't really go here because he's just going to lose material. So I don't really understand this knight manoeuvre. Maybe it's just like likes to match up the knights on that side of the board at all. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, still, it's not game changing, right? These are minor inaccuracies. Yeah, major minor inaccuracies, if, if that makes sense. But. Black's not going to lose the game because of these sorts of things. They can add up eventually, but probably at this level, it's kind of about keeping pieces and looking out for like obvious tactics. That's the main focus. But still, you might as well be improving your strategic play as well. Uh, okay, so carry on. Let's have a look. Okay, one. Uh, okay. All right, okay. I mean, I prefer doing something with the Knights, but I've talked about that at length. Uh, maybe transferring this knight here, possibly. Okay. Now this just drops a pawn, and it looks like Black spent like a second on this move, or whether the the ten seconds has added on on it's either ten one second or uh, eleven seconds. I'm not sure depending on the increment works. So either way, it's not long enough because it just drops a pawn. Right. So just be careful. Things like that. And then again, black moves the queen very, very quickly. And this is a nice move, just setting up tactics, potential tactics. There's already the threat of coming to uh, g6 in the position 
uh, winning the exchange. All right, and the bishop's good here as well. So white has maybe sort of fish for this. Seen this straight away and sort of played this, so that's good. I like that. Uh, black needs to respond by moving the queen out of this pin. Whenever you see a bishop staring at a queen or a king or something like that, you just, as black did earlier, step out of the pin. So really, really keep it in mind. You know, definitely something to be considering. But alas, black doesn't. It takes the pawns. But likes to take these pawns, I think, in the centre of the board, which loses the exchange for black and should therefore lose the game. All right. Maybe this was the point of the knight coming here, so we can take it back with this knight. I don't know. But we keep playing, we keep plugging on. Uh, at any level, you still keep playing. And black rightfully declines the exchange of queens. Right, down material, obviously don't exchange queens. You want the queens on the board. Uh, good move. Right, white strategy should be sort of trade off or just improve the position. But this is a nice, a nice piece now, protected by the pawn. So white's looking good from this position, right? Uh, challenging the bishop makes sense now. Finally, this, this knight's got a, a job to do, which is attack this bishop. So makes sense uh, to do that, I, I imagine, yeah. Now, what are you play? What would you play in this position? The queen's under attack. What are you going to do? So, in the position, white takes this pawn, right? Which is fine uh, to do that. Uh, it, it looks like it loses material because after this move, white sort of steps away and just loses a rook, right? And and this it's just crushing. But both players seem to sort of forget that this rook is on the second file, right? So it's sort of it's a board awareness issue, maybe. I'm not sure. Bishop takes, you know, just bishop takes, rook takes, right? Rook takes, for example. Now you wouldn't take the rook in that position, but we're still just down a piece, right? So this, this just, this is sort of a losing move by black, but why both players sort of miss the rook. Right, uh, so it's board awareness, maybe, uh, maybe sort of pattern recognition, but more board awareness issues and time as well. Black's not spending any time making these moves. So, anyway, nice little finish here on that position. So, overall, uh, how could I sort of assess that game? A couple of like inaccurate sort of strategic moves and then some, some major sort of blunders. That a result for me of, of time again, just time, taking your time, moving slowly, and maybe a bit of board awareness in that position. Okay, so that's probably it for this video. Hope you found that useful. Uh, take care.